What's up guys? Today I just wanted to take a couple minutes to talk to you about some new CSS things. Now we do have some new CSS4 selectors, uh, but that's not what we're going to be talking about. Uh, there's actually two uh, big new things in CSS that I personally love a lot and I find very useful. Uh, and I also think these two have some of the best browser support at the moment. Now, as browser support gets better for these other uh, features and whatnot from CSS, I'll probably come back and make another demonstration. But for now, this is just what we're going to talk about today. So the two things that we're going to talk about is CSS variables and blending modes. So CSS variables, uh, I'm sure you know what variables are if you do any kind of scripting or use SAS or anything like that. Uh, but CSS variables are pretty impressive and pretty powerful. Uh, so why would you want to use CSS variables over SAS variables? Well, uh, SAS variables are static and they aren't really variables in the end. They're just values static values that are put into your CSS through uh, some sort of software or script. So they're not that powerful. They help with development for sure. But CSS variables are so much better. Uh, they work just the same, but they do more sometimes. I think my favorite thing about these CSS variables is the fact that they run live in the browser. So if you change them, it changes in runtime. So it changes immediately through the entire uh, style sheet and everything. You can also use variables in inline HTML, but I'm not going to be going over that. I'm just going to be showing you the syntax of the CSS variables and how, you know just how you would end up using them. So as you can see here, I've got four blocks. Uh, they're just black square blocks and if we go down here, where is this? Okay, so this is the block container. So you can see I'm using I'm actually using a variable for the block size uh, and I'm using a variable for the background color. So if we come down a little farther and take a look, I've got this little section here. So I've got just more variables that I'll be using. So if I was to uncomment this right here you'll see now they all have their own colors uh, color one color two color three color four and to use these variables you first have to declare the variables so I am declaring these variables up here at the top on this root so I have color one color two color three color four and here's the block size so if I went and changed this block size from 200 to 150 You'll see right there they all change just like that. Um, so I'm going to turn that back to 200. And when I, ho I have it set to hover, when I hover over it, it's going to go to this, uh, where is it, this base color right here. So if I was to change this one thing up here, this base color to pink, when I go and hover over it, they're all going to change to pink. Um, down here as well, on our CSS, if I was to just change this here to, you know, color two, there we go. We, now we have two yellow blocks. And obviously this is just a very simple demonstration on how you can use variables. They are very powerful and I do find them very helpful. And I will be using them uh, quite seriously in an upcoming project that I am working on. And if you want to take a look through here, I am using CSS variables throughout this entire document right here. Um, so I would encourage you to go take a look at this and, you know, see how this is working, play around with it, do whatever you want. I will uh, link to this pen in the description of this video. So don't worry about that. Uh, let's go ahead and change this back to color three. And I'm just going to go ahead and show you a little bit of the browser support we have right now. So for CSS variables, like I said, it's pretty good. Uh, the main thing not supported for desktop is Internet Explorer. Uh, Chrome is supported with the WebKit. And yeah, that's it for desktop. But when we go to mobile, it's not quite as good, but it's still not bad. Uh, 
Android phone is the only one that I see that's noteworthy that does not support CSS variables. So you can um, you j just just keep that in mind when you're working with this. So have a fallback uh, if you're aiming for people using Android or if you are aiming for those uh, Internet Explorer people, uh, those few numbers that they are. Uh, the next thing I want to talk to you about is these blending modes right here. So let's find this in the HTML down here. All right, here we go. So we have one block, okay? It's got an image, a background image on it, all right? So let me actually grab this. I'm going to move this. The, the best way I've found to add uh, like a color and a blending mode is to use a linear gradient. Uh, if I can find it down here. Yeah, so you can have multiple backgrounds, but unfortunately you can't have a solid color as a background and then an image as a background, and that's very unfortunate. Uh, I, I'm not sure why they have that like that but if you use a linear gradient um, now you see I'm using uh, the variable I set for linear gradient and if I come up here and show you what that is linear gradient is uh, it's a linear gradient going from orange to orange so it's just going to appear as a solid color and no one will know any better unless they go and look at your code uh, but anyways when you use a linear gradient you can have the gradient and you can have a background image so if we go ahead and we comment this in, you'll see the next square here. There we go. So this is the same, you know, same block, but I just added a linear gradient over it. And again, we'll take a look at that right here. Background, linear gradient, and image. So now uh, we're gonna wanna blend these together. And I find this to be pretty powerful and I mean, I like it. So if you use black and white images in your website for profile pictures or whatever, they take up less uh, space and they're just smaller file sizes than a colored image. But this is a great way to add color back into your image. Um, so if we come here and we uncomment this and scroll down here, so here we go. I have the background blend mode of multiply on this block. So I'm just blending this orange and this image with multiply and it's it works pretty well. I don't see any issues with it. Um, there is, it's not quite as good as far as browser support goes, especially on mobile as the CSS variables are, but uh, it's only gonna get better from here and there's just a lot a lot of potential for this really um and then another one i'm just going to show you down here is it's just another block with a different blending mode on it uh, i think this one yeah this one's hard light but if you wanted you could do things like overlay uh you can put different blending modes there's a bunch of different blending modes on and like i said it's a great way to add color back into your image or just you know make it fit your design more. The only other way that I am aware of at the moment to get this background blend mode to work is you would basically have to have another element over top of your background or your image, I should say. Um, but doing this where you have a linear gradient and a image will work very well and I have not had any issues with it yet. So real quick before I end this, I just wanna come over here and show you some of the browser support for uh, the background blending modes. If you look here, uh, Firefox is good, Chrome is good, Safari's okay. Uh, you can only use hue, saturation, color, and lumo luminosity. Uh, Opera is okay, iOS, Safari is okay. Uh, the new Android browsers and Chrome for Android are also okay, but Internet Explorer is not, uh, Edge is not, Opera Mini is not, and any older uh, Android browser is not okay with background blend mode as of now. 
All right, so that's gonna be it for this video. That's everything we're gonna talk about for today. There was some other stuff that I wanted to show you, but I just can't yet because of browser support issues. Uh, but as browser support gets better, I will most likely come back and go over this again, not necessarily the CSS variables and the background blend mode, but I'm gonna go over filters and the eight digit hex notation and all of that stuff as they come along and as they progress but other than that if this video helped you go ahead like subscribe if you have any questions or comments leave them down below and i'll see you in the next video